Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Question and Answer, where I take questions that you leave on the other videos that I post each week and then I answer them live. Now, if you're the first time you're watching this, if you ask questions on the other videos and I select those questions to be answered on this video, then I'm gonna give you $10 in free Bitcoin. And if the question is the most voted um, of the series, then you're gonna get an additional $50. So the question from last week's question and answer video is Lynn. And her question was um, how we can teach children about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And I thought that was a great question. And it's not just because we wanna learn how to teach kids, but we wanna learn how to teach everybody. And I believe it's the same approach for everybody. Um, if you want more on that question, go back and watch that video. Lynn, if you're watching this, make sure you reach out to me to claim your prize. All right, so let's get right into the questions and answers. So question number one we have from um, Mecca Wyrit Vid. Sorry if I mispronounced your username there. Um, and he says, let's say a Bitcoin ETF gets approved and it becomes a standard part of an ETF savings account. Could synthetic Bitcoin ETFs, if they come to light as a next logical step, could they actually depress the price as they practically would create more virtual Bitcoins from nothing? So the question is, um, if Bitcoin ETFs get approved, could they, uh, the synthetic Bitcoin create Bitcoins out of nothing and then depress the price? And the answer is yes, 100%. As a matter of fact, I have a four part video series on this about Wall Street coming into Bitcoin and what that means. I break down this exact question. So uh, check out the uh, video for that and you can look into more details. But basically what happens is through an ETF, it, is it creates more claims to Bitcoin than actual Bitcoin. So that means that instead of buying Bitcoin, I could just buy a Bitcoin alternative through an ETF. And so instead of my money going into Bitcoin, which would create the, the supply and demand to be offset, instead of, instead of the money going into Bitcoin, it goes in somewhere else. And so what we've seen is we've seen this already play out in other assets, specifically the gold market. So in the gold market, we have um, in the ETFs, we have about 500 paper ounces of gold for every actual physical ounce. That does depress the price because that money should be going into the asset itself. All right, so if those 500 of paper ounces were actually to move all that money into the physical itself, then it would, of course, it would bring the price back up. So good question. Now, um, an ETF is good and bad. There's definitely good. I like the fact that it's gonna bring in a bunch of new people, potentially up to 500 million new people into the space. It's gonna make it very easy for them to buy. Um, so I do like it from that perspective. Hopefully it increases awareness. However, there are a lot of risks, um, this being one of them, and it could, could potentially um, put downward pressure on the price. So good question. Question number two we have from Sean Coyne. Great info and guidance. Can't understand why you put so much time and effort into educating the average Joes for free. Well, um, just to answer that, that was a statement. Um, the reason why I do that is because I want to push adoption. I want to increase education. And what I really hope is that you guys take this information and you share it. So take what you've learned and discuss it with somebody else. Continue that chain, continue putting it forward. Share the videos. If you find them helpful, share the videos. Now, to the question. He says, the question is hopefully we listen and, and learn to make money um, in crypto and investing in general. Where or how would we store it? As you always say, our fiat money is losing value at the time. But obviously, we need the bank to pay bills, cable, loans, etc. So do we figure ways to only put as little fiat in the bank as possible? So the question is, um, you know, if we believe that fiat's losing money, it's not a matter of belief, it's fact, right? So our, our, our fiat has lost value. As a matter of fact, it's lost about 90% of its value in the last like 50 years. Um, so he's saying, if we know that's losing value and we wanna put money into investing, how do we balance that? So um, that's a great question, Sean. Um, so basically, what you're, what you're really asking is how do we store our value? Obviously, we're gonna need that fiat money to pay the bills, like you said. Um, I also recommend keeping at least three, if not six months of capital saved in cash in case there's any kind of emergencies that you need. We've talked about that before. Um, but where do you store your value? So that's where you have to try and find the place to store it where it's gonna increase value. So that could be bonds, stocks, mutual funds, cryptos, real estate, et cetera. And so you just kind of have to find that balance. Um, you do need fiat because we're still in a fiat world at this point. So I recommend keeping three to six months there and the rest put into other places where it can earn above average yields. All right, good question, Sean. Question number three. Question number three is from Josh Ramporti. And he says, hey Mark, what macro trends are you looking for in the upcoming decades to profit? 
Like I see crypto being hugely successful in the future because the current trend favors automation, efficiency, and digitization. First of all, Josh, a great, great question because it shows that you're thinking the right way. So we wanna focus on the big trends, right? As an investors, we wanna invest in the trend, and then we wanna invest with the trends within the trends. You mentioned um, automation, and digitization. So uh, for sure, autom automation is there. So there's all types of automation trends that we're seeing um, in technologies, like for example, robotics is, is a big piece, right? We've been seeing that for years in, in manufacturing and now robotics is becoming um, much smaller, much more specialized. Um, I have a video that I'll put a link to here um, called The Pendulum, and it talks about these 80-year swings where we go from centralization, we cycles, into a decentralization or a me cycle. So that's a massive trend. It's a 40-year it's a swing, 80 years round trip. And so that's a big trend that I'm looking for. And, it, and it, what it shows is that the world is moving into away from centralization and back into decentralization. And we can see this in with Brexit happening, Italian referendum. We see it with the protests in Paris right now. We saw it with Donald Trump being elected. Um, as you mentioned, you know, these, those other ones also computing. So we see like a, the sharing economy is a trend that we're starting to see where people are using underutilized assets like Uber, right? So you have uh, extra seats in your car and somebody else can use those. Um, or Airbnb where the, you know open houses are being used now to, for people to stay in short-term rentals. So we also see the same with computing. So you have extra hard drive space, you have extra computing power, you have extra bandwidth on your computer that you're not using. And through decentralized technology, blockchain technology, we're seeing that being able to be tapped into. I think that's gonna be a really, really big place. Um, so you know projects like storage corn, or coin or file coin, um, those are gonna be really big. So um, computing will be big. Also, another big trend is baby boomers. So in all the developed countries, the United States, Europe, China, Japan, we see that the, the, the um, demographics are aging. We have these baby boomers that are starting to hit retirement age. So things that will be uh, really catering towards those retirement age people, that could be um, one, moving from their bigger houses into smaller houses. So we'll definitely see that trend play out in real estate. Um, we'll see it with their activities. So they'll be buying RVs, for example. So like RVs, recreation stuff should go up. Healthcare will be really big because they're gonna need a lot of healthcare. Also, we're gonna see a continued trend from moving from big business to small business. As a matter of fact, they said by 2020, we should see about 40% of our workforce going into gig jobs. So those are like specialty jobs. Um, so those are, those, are, those are lots of trends. And so your job is to look for these trends and try and find ways to invest into them. So a uh, great question, Josh. Last question, question number Number four is from Ronnie. And Ronnie says, uh, excellent video, thanks for the tips. Thanks, Ronnie. Uh, outside of swing trading and investing in volatile assets and focusing on a career, how do you recommend starting the process of doubling your money from 4,000 to 8,000, 8,000 to 16,000, et cetera, so you can build up the capital to have opportunities in real estate or starting a business later on? So outside of swing trading and investing, and outside of your career, how could you do that? Well, um, you've taken away some really good options. First thing that I would say before we I answer that directly is that you have to think of it, you're not always, it's not about doubling, how can I make one move to go from 4,000 to 8,000, but really how long will it take me to go from 4,000 to 8,000? So maybe it takes me five years. So maybe um, I use that 4,000, or maybe I just go learn new skills, I start a side job, so let's say I'm starting from 4,000 to 8,000. So let's say that um, I have 4,000 saved right now and my, go my job, my goal is to get that to 8,000. So maybe I just learn a new skill and I start a side job. Maybe I start selling products online, uh, affiliate marketing, and that helps me earn an extra 4,000. So now I've doubled my savings from four to eight. So maybe it was just a side hustle that got you from four to eight. And maybe that took a couple years to get there. So it's not about one move from four to eight. You have to think about, that's why I talked about um, in that video, how to double your money. You have to think about it you know, in terms of time. So your goal is to try and get that shorter and shorter each time. But in the beginning, it could take a really long time to get there. So it could take you five years, especially, you know, double from one million to two million, for example. As you continue on, your skills will increase and the amount of money increases. And so you have to kind of change your tactics. So um, I would say focusing on career, without focusing on a career and investing, really you're limited to side hustles, learning how to create more income and things like that. So hopefully that helps answer your question, Ronnie. All good questions for everybody that had your question answered, reach out to me directly and find out how to claim your prize. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for tuning in for this question and answer session. Um, to your success, I'm out. <laughs>